and welcome to Youth and Development, produced by Today's Youth Asia. In the TV show, Youth and Development, we bring young leaders face to face with the key players of Development Works. My name is Samip, and today we have with us Mr. Carl Hibo, Chairman, University of Colorado, Board of Regents. It's really a pleasure to be here uh, with you for today and as I mentioned my oldest child is the same age as you are and so I'm very familiar with um, the education that young people are receiving particularly in the United States right now. Um, I'm here uh, with the delegation of American Council of Young Political Leaders. Um, I serve as chairman uh, to the University of Colorado Board of Regents. It's a position which is elected uh, in the state of Colorado. The CU system uh, is uh, uh, the largest higher educational system in the state. We have 57,000 students, a $2.8 billion budget, and we're the fourth largest employer in the state of Colorado. Uh, in addition to that, we, we have this $2.8 billion budget, um, but only uh, $150 million or so comes from the state of Colorado. So while we are a public institution, uh, in many ways we operate in a very entrepreneurial and private fashion. There are various numbers of teaching in the world. Which one do you think is the most effective one? I think uh, that kind of teaching uh, which uh, focuses on the student and the learner is, is most important. In addition to that, um, experiential based learning um, is very helpful to many young people. Education is one of the most important thing in the life of youths. Um, there are many kids around the world who didn't get the quality education. In your view, what, is, what can be done to improve the quality education so that the literacy rate can be improved around the world? Uh, first of all, let me address the importance of, of education. Um, you look at uh, the, the number of, of people that um, are educated and receive education uh, around the world and it's important uh, not only for the quality of life of individuals um, and the social, cultural and economic development of the state or the city or the country, um, but it's also important because it's really an economic driver uh, for uh, the economy because if you have a group of young people who are uh, educated and trained and capable of doing uh, the jobs which are necessary to be done uh, in the economy, then people are going to be employed. And when people are employed, they're able to pay the taxes that are due the government as a result of that, that work. And when they're able to do that, then the government receives those funds and is able to do things like pave the roads, uh, improve the water infrastructure. So education is uh, not just important to uh, children and, and young people for their own individual development, but it's also important for the development of community because it creates capacity. The economic conditions of many students are below the poverty line. So what can be done? to improve the economic so that the it helps the child, it, it helps the student to go to the school. It's important that um, everything start with the individual, uh, whether it's a poor school or a wealthy school. The quality of that learning is based on uh, the teacher's uh, c capability of teaching and the student's ability to learn and desire to learn. So if you have a young person who come, doesn't have any uh, or very little material goods but comes to school every day with a desire to learn more, then that child is going to learn and be a very good contributing member of his or her society. What do you think about educational system of world can uh, and should be changed order uh, in day and better, uh, more, better and more effective system? I think that it, it also comes back again to uh, having teachers who are motivated to have students learn. Uh, certainly it's good when individuals and organizations uh, focus on the importance of education. The challenge is that uh, education is a long-term investment and so you're not going to realize the benefits a community is not going to realize the benefits of educating the young person uh, for a number of years. 
but it's critically important that uh, that focus be placed um, in households, in communities, and in countries. So what are your views in religious education? Uh, do you think it as a necessity or as an optional get-by? Uh, in the United States, we have both uh, religious uh, schools, public schools, private schools, charter schools. There are any number of uh, schools that children will end up in. And so I would say that uh, religious education and training or religious-based education and training is good and important, but it's also not for everyone. And so some children in the United States um, don't go to um, a religious school. What is your objective in coming to Nepal? Uh, I've come to Nepal as uh, part of a delegation of the American Council of Young Political Leaders. And we're hosted here by today's Youth Asia. And the objective for our delegation is to understand more about the social and political infrastructure in Nepal. Uh, as we do this, uh, we're a group of four Republicans, two Democrats, and one Independent. And as we've traveled around the country, seeing your country, understanding it better, we have examined our own country, and hopefully, as Democrats, Republicans, and Independents, uh, we're in a position to better affect and more effectively affect um, the trajectory of the United States because each of us is uh, elected or involved in the political process uh, in, the, in, the, in the country. And um, ACYPL is an organization which has been doing these exchanges for 46 years. Uh, as a matter of fact, last year there was uh, a Nepalese delegation uh, which went to the United States with similar objectives to have that group of young political leaders, everyone 40 or under, I understand that maybe doesn't sound young to you, but one day it will. So what that is, is the, um, uh, these young people will end up in positions of, uh, of authority, and ACYPL has had uh, uh, members in the U.S. Senate, uh, members in Congress, leadership in the Senate and Congress, and these experiences that we get uh, through our examination of other countries and cultures is, uh, is important to um, uh, the world's uh, community, really. Anything to say about Nepal's education system? I uh, understand that the formal education system didn't start until the 1960s. And uh, because of that, it's, it's a young system and one which continues to evolve. And I encourage uh, parents and households young children and others to focus on the importance of education because sometimes uh, the government can't, doesn't have the capacity in the United States also, the capacity to do everything that needs to be done. And it's up to the individual to uh, create a course of their own history. And what I would say is um, for the young people of Nepal, I encourage you to uh, focus on your education and don't wait for someone else to um, try and create a better environment because uh, in some situations you may be waiting for a while. So how can we create awareness program to the students of rural areas so that they can uh, do good in education or they should be involved in education system right? rather than going to the um, industries or factories and involving in labor walks? Certainly in, um, in your more rural or agricultural communities, uh, you find um, people working at a, a younger age and you would find that in the United States on a, on a family farm where uh, the son or daughter has to get up in the morning to milk the cow um, or uh, do something in the fields. Um, I think that despite the fact that um, children may um, have to work, I think there, there has to be a focus on making time uh, to learn. And uh, whether that's 15 minutes a day uh, or four hours a day, um, l a little bit uh, every day will add up to be a lot. So if you do something for 15 minutes a day uh, and you do that for four years, then uh, I'll leave to you that that math problem. You can do that at home. As our country is a developing country, uh, it, uh, comparing to the U.S. education system, there is a lot of differences. Um, there is n uh, not the quality teachers and 
other resources and materials uh, to uplift the education system? How can we solve the problem to uplift the education system of our country? First of all, I'm, I'm not terribly familiar with um, the quality or of, of teaching or not. Uh, There's not learning processes there in our country. But what I, what I can say is that your system um, is more of a teaching system and rather than learning. Yeah. Right, and in the United States, um, it, while there are many different schools that teach in, in different ways, um, generally we have a less um, formal system uh, of education and it's more student-based um, and ex learning based. With regard to um, one's ability to uh, find, uh, improve education, and in the United States, we seek to improve uh, education every day. And the way we do that uh, as parents and individuals is we, uh, for instance, in the, in the schools, whether it's a grade school, a middle school, or a high school in the United States, uh, we have these things called parent-teacher organizations. And so uh, parents, uh, we'll have regular meetings uh, with teachers in the school and discuss issues that the school and the children are facing and maybe how can we do things um, better and how can we uh, get the tools that we need uh, to be effective. And so it goes back again to um, people in the school taking responsibility for the school to improve the school. As you told, there should be three, four relationship between student, teacher and parents. But uh, context to our country, parents are not so aware about the education system and they do not go to the school and uh, learn about what, they, what their children do in the school. They just go when, uh, when the result is there and they just say, my daughter or my son has done this much nor, or has done bad or has been demolized. They should, uh, interact with the teachers, but they don't do. So how can we aware them to go and... Uh... I would say that uh, as, a, as a child of a parent, uh, you should uh, take your, your parents and say, let's, let's go to school and uh, talk to the teacher or organize. Um, in the United States, we have uh, something at the, our grade schools at the beginning of the year and often it's an ice cream social. So uh, they'll have ice cream, they'll invite everybody to come in um, and students will see their classroom, parents will be with them. Uh, they, the teacher at that point will say, um, at least in my children's school, um, this is what I expect of your children. This is what we, are, we plan to learn this year. Um, and they will take questions from, um, fr from the parents. And so maybe it's up to uh, you going talk with your teacher and say, I'd like to bring my parents in, or maybe we should organize uh, a school night to, um, so my parents and other parents can better understand um, what the objectives of the school are and how we're learning. And when people are involved, um, they will want what is best for their children because they love their children and that will result in better schools. What is your memorial experience in a trip of Nepal? I, I have found Nepal to be a, a beautiful country and, and one that has uh, many, uh, many sides to it. It's very complex uh, and beautiful. Uh, for instance, we spent one day uh, on the border town of Burgunj and certainly that is, uh, that is a different uh, feel and, and area than um, here in Kathmandu or uh, in the uh, lowland areas where we visited uh, or actually on the edge of the Himalayas. Um, so it is, it is a country which is very um, complex and it's my understanding you have some hundred dialects uh, in, in your country which certainly makes um, it's that much more rich, yet that much more complicated. As you have visited many parts of our country, uh, our country is rich in cultural heritage. Uh, there are more than 103 ethnic groups in our country. Our country is a complete example of uni uni unity in diversity. Would you like to say something about this? I, I come from a state, uh, the state of Colorado, uh, which was founded in 1876. 
so uh, the fact that your history is so long and rich, uh, it, it's, it's truly uh, inspiring um, to those of us who come from a, a place that is, that is so young and doesn't share the same uh, depth and richness of, of history uh, that you have. You are the chairperson of the Colorado University and the senior vice president of the E.I. Palmer Foundation, the grant organization based on Colorado Springs. So which people do you help in this organization? Well, first of all, it, with the University of Colorado, um, we help develop uh, young, young people uh, so they can effectively work, uh, well, have more enriched lives and, and work hopefully in the state of Colorado. Um, with some 57,000 students currently and some 250,000 uh, graduates currently living, uh, we make uh, a significant um, impact in the lives of, of individuals and then they carry on and follow their uh, life path and hopefully we've enriched their lives. Um, as we're talking about that and as chairman uh, of the uh, University of Colorado uh, Board of Regents, I do want to present to today's Youth Asia, uh, University of Colorado Buffalo. They've been our hosts this, uh, this week and uh, they've been very gracious and allowed us to see much uh, of your country. Uh, the University of Colorado Boulder is the uh, Buffaloes and so uh, I invite one of you um, to take this for uh, today's Youth Asia. Um, maybe, I don't know, maybe it'll end up in their office uh, sitting above Santos and making sure everything's going okay or something. Uh, and then uh, let me uh, mention also, since you asked about uh, El Pomar Foundation. Um, El Pomar Foundation, uh, I mentioned that uh, is a, it's a nonprofit organization. It's like an NGO. As, as you may know, and a, a funding organization. And in the United States, we have some 1.8 million uh, NGOs or public charities. And these public charities in the United States are started by individuals who see an issue in their community that they want to address. So they start these organizations and give it this nonprofit structure. El Pomar is, is like that in that our founder Spencer Penrose, uh, who came to Colorado from Philadelphia in the late 1800s, um, uh, made money in gold and then copper and then endowed uh, the foundation uh, with the objective of uh, enhancing the welfare of the residents of the state of Colorado. So now what El Pomar does is El Pomar helps fund those NGOs in the state of Colorado, which are working on uh, issues of importance to uh, young people, old people, healthy people, sick people, and um, the, the focus is uh, strictly on the state of Colorado. What are your feelings about your children? You have four children, and during their, you know, grown-up times, you are not with them. What do you have to say about that? Uh, what I can say is that uh, we've been on the road now for uh, two weeks and uh, I miss my children terribly and uh, with parenting there there is nothing more rewarding but nothing more exhausting and children give uh, great richness and depth to your life. It's, it can also be very challenging and with four of them they sometimes you know they fight really well together and they play really well together. Um, but uh, I miss my children terribly, and you didn't hurt my feelings. Thank you for asking. What would you like to say to the youth to be inspiring as you? What I would say is that if the youth of Nepal are represented here today by you four, I think the future of Nepal looks bright. And the fact that you have come to do this, and it seems that you believe in taking responsibility for uh, the quality and trajectory of your life, uh, I think you're doing the right thing. And if more children in Nepal take that responsibility uh, along with their families, then uh, the future of this beautiful country um, will truly be bright. And I look forward to bringing my kids back here to see it. Mr. Carl Hibble for being with us today and sharing with us your insightful thoughts and ideas. Thank you all for being with us. We look forward to your feedback. Our email address is utya at the rate gmail.com. We will be 
back the next week at the same time. Have a nice week. Namaste.